everybody. I hope you're having a good day today. I'm going to have another lesson. Uh, the title is a actually a quotation from Exodus 23 and 7, which God says, I will not acquit the guilty. And these words spoken uh, is in the context of a lot of sundry laws that were given to the children of Israel that would apply to all of God's subjects. And all the laws in this context deal with treating your fellow man fairly and with respect for him and his property. See, if people today could only learn these few laws and abide by them, our world would be a much better place and not be in need of more laws. See, the quotation above uh, that I will not acquit the guilty suggests that God will not justify the sinner. Now, in our world, a lot of people get a pass. People break the law, and depending on who they are, how much power they might have, uh, uh, what, what general context they're always in, uh, some people just give them a pass. But God's not going to do that. God will not justify the sinner in any way. And he will not clear the wicked person as long as that person stays in their sins. And, of course, it's also known as their iniquities. And remember that our iniquities separate us from God, Isaiah 59 and verse 2. So as long as we have our sins, God will not approve of us, nor let us off the hook, so to speak. Now the first couple lines of Nahum 1 and verse 3 reads this, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and the Lord will by no means leave the guilty unpunished. All right, now that's a statement about God. God will not leave the guilty unpunished. The guilty are going to face their punishment, whether it happens in this life or the next life. In the Old Testament, we understand that the guilty received their punishment during their life. They had all the problems come upon them, and they had the calamities come upon them. And so God took care of them in that way. And in the New Covenant age, uh, basically we have something reserved for us we either have the home in heaven or we have an eternal torment uh, that we're going to have to face now many human doctrines in the world teach outright dis let me say that again many human doctrines in the world today that are taught they outright dispute this passage and teach things that do not agree with what god has spoken and, of course, there's reasons for it because people want to hear this stuff. See, there's a group called the Universalists. They teach that everyone, whether good or bad, is going to be saved because of the love of God and the sacrifice of Jesus. You know, Jesus died for the whole world. So, in fact, everyone will be saved whether they acknowledge God or not. And, obviously, this doctrine is not supported by the Bible. Neither does it agree with the Bible. And so you can understand why universalists just ignore the Bible, because uh, uh, that's what they do. I mean, they, ha they have to ignore it, because otherwise there there's a lot of people God calls guilty. And, of course, they want to think everybody's saved. See, there's many others teach a type of uncommitted faith, whereby all one has to do is speak a few select words, and they'll be saved and go to heaven. And nothing will keep their soul out of heaven. And once again, this doctrine is not supported by the scriptures. In fact, it's totally against the scriptures. And so we notice these two doctrines uh, remove all accountability of a person towards God. They expect God to save everyone regardless of how they live and behave. But see, that violates God's character that has been revealed throughout time and throughout the scriptures, all, all nearly 4,000 years of scripture that we have. This violates God's character. And so we, we, we learn God has always held people accountable for their sins. And we saw the first example, Eve was the first to sin. And God did not overlook what she did. Neither did he absolve Adam when he took the fruit and from Eve and ate it. Well, she made me do it, is what his complaint was. That didn't absolve Adam from the sin that he had committed. And so we, we, we understand that false doctrines may sound good and appealing to humans 
and allow them to think that they can continue in what God calls sin. But see, these teachers of error are nothing more than Satan's tools to keep people out of heaven. And really, the sad part about it is that many of them do not realize they are being used as pawns of Satan. They don't realize that. They think they're doing a good job. They think they're working for the Lord. And Satan has them deceived into believing false doctrine. And so most of them feel secure in their faith and their salvation. And Satan is probably just laughing at the gullibility of people as they live lives that God does not approve of. See, man may give them a pass, but God will not do it. God will not acquit the wicked sinner in any way. And we say wicked sinner, really anybody who sins is a sinner. God will not acquit anyone who has sin in their life. And that's why it's important that we find ways to get the sin removed from our life. And through the gospel, we understand our sins are washed away and that we have the remission of sins through the baptism. And, and so that's the way we come at it. And, and in a symbolic way, we, we are, as the death, burial, and resurrection, we, we put the old self to death and we raise to walk in newness of life. And we are a new creature. And we are, once again, justified in the sight of God and we have a relationship with God. But even then, yeah, we continue to sin. And so if we continue in those sins, there's no longer going to remain a sacrifice for those sins. Hebrews 10, 26 tells us that. And so what we need to do is follow the what, what John told us there in 1 John 1 and verse 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins. So we can have our sin, as long as we get our sins taken away, and that's why Paul suggested you pray without ceasing. Pray all the time, because we don't know when the Lord is coming back, and if we are involved in sin or have not repented of sin, then we're going to be guilty of sin even when the Lord comes back. We could be in the Lord's church for 40, 50 years serving the Lord best we can, but if we make mistakes and we do something we shouldn't be doing, then God's going to hold us accountable for that. And we would hate to waste all that time. So, pray without ceasing. Always work towards this. And the best way to keep your minds in the right place is keep your minds on things above. Colossians 3, 1 and 2 tells us that. Don't be so concerned about the things of this world. Think about spiritual thoughts, spiritual matters. And even though we have to operate in this world, doesn't mean we have to be a part of this world. So that's what we need to do. And, and so the only hope for man is to repent of his wicked ways and turn away from them and seek the Lord to do his will. Faithful obedience to God's commands is the only way one can acquire salvation. So while many may scream that we are ignoring the grace of God, let us remind people that God's grace is twofold. God offers it freely, but man still has to accept it. And if he accepts it by meeting the terms of the covenant, what God has set forth. God said, Here, here's my rules, now live by them. And of course, by doing so, yes, we have the salvation which God promises. Grace does not overlook sin. As a lot of these people are going to suggest when they start talking about grace, the grace of God. No, God does not overlook sin. God cannot stand sin. He hates sin. And it's like 1 John 1, 5 says, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Sin is darkness. And there is no sin in God. God does not like sin. God does not tolerate sin. God doesn't even want to look at sin. And so that's why we need Jesus to protect us from God. We need his, Jesus' love, his propitiation to hide our sins from God. So we, we use Jesus as a covering. He is our shield. And so when God looks at us, of course, Jesus standing in the way, and he sees Jesus, which is basically like him, and God is happy. So we are his, and so that's what we're supposed to do. And our command, command from 1 John 2 tells us, don't sin. But if we do sin, we have an advocate, Jesus Christ. All right, so throughout the Bible, the admonition is to get people to stop their sins and live righteously. 
and we encourage people to do that all the time we ask them to do it and the problem is they don't want to give up their sins well you know what there's not much we can do for them if they don't want to give up their sins they're gonna to have to take it up with God I mean that, that, there's just no other way of saying it and the God is the one's going to judge we can't well they have good they're good people they have honest hearts they just have a little fault here and there we might give them a pass but you know what according to the Bible God is not see people have to give up their sins and live righteously that's the only way salvation can occur so nobody who's unwilling to cease or give up their sins will be allowed into heaven and this is a warning that we need to share with everybody because everybody needs to hear this this is truth it's the truth that's revealed in the Bible and if you don't like it we'll take it up with God you may not like all the rules God has put in place and you may think that it's not fair or something like that but you know what they're God's rules and we really should not question them all we can do is teach them and even if you don't agree there's some things I don't like but God that's what God teaches and I cannot teach anything other than what God teaches in in certain things so we have to teach what God wants to set once said I mean to do so see see if we stop being a servant of God and start pleasing men that's not going to be any good. Look at Paul, how, how Paul talked about that. And yes, Paul even realized, well, by telling you the truth, have I become your enemy? So in the Galatian letter, you can read that, where God wants to ple where Paul wants to please God. And of course, <coughs> he, and now, the only way we can please men is if they have a desire for the truth and we give them the truth. Okay, and that way, yeah, pleasing men, uh, as long as they have the right attitude about the truth and they want the truth, then okay. But most people do not want the truth. They want to continue in their sin, but they want someone to tell them, oh, that's okay, God will overlook it, and, and stuff like that. Like, like we said the other day, uh, and talking about certain sins, somebody publicly said Jesus was wrong. I mean... So, anyway, consider these thoughts. Uh, if you don't like what's in the Bible, you're going to have to take that up with God because those are the words that's going to judge you. And that's a standard by which we're going to be judged is the Bible. It's one of those books that's going to be opened when our life is presented before God at the judgment. So consider these thoughts. And um, remember, God will by no means allow the wicked to go unpunished and the sinner to go unpunished. So keep those thoughts in mind, and the best thing we can do is get the sin out of our life. We do that through our obedience to the gospel by being baptized for the remission of sins and then living righteously and faithfully and asking God for forgiveness as much as we can. That's the only way we can have this salvation. Consider these thoughts. Uh, that's our lesson for today. Hope you enjoy it. Maybe you can share it with somebody. And Lord willing, we'll be back here again tomorrow with another lesson. Bye-bye for now.